Adventures in Research. Did you ever have one of those unpleasant nightmares in which you dream you're falling through space, hurtling earthward with nothing to stop you, to then wake up with welcome relief? The fear of falling is one of mankind's few really basic phobias. But there was a man who took much of the danger out of falling. His name was Andre Garnera, and he fell 8,000 feet through space to prove his idea of a piece of silk. This is Paul Shannon bringing you another transcribed story of science produced as a public service in cooperation with the Westinghouse Research Laboratories. And today telling you the story of Andre Garnerin, the man who perfected the first parachute. The idea first came to him in his physician's office in the late 1700s. Ah, uh, they... There, Andre, uh, that, that that should do it. If you're careful about not putting your weight on your ankle for a while. Oh, it feels much better, Doctor. How long do you think it will take my ankle to mend? Oh, now, not so fast, Andre. You have a nasty sprain there, and I suggest you keep to the ground for quite a while. But, Doctor, I intend to make a balloon ascension. Aha, as I suspected, you and those insane balloons. That's how you sprained your ankle in the first place. It was no one's fault but my own. If we had gotten rid of the ballast more quickly, we wouldn't have landed with such a job. Oh, Andre, every time physicians find a new way to keep a man alive, man invents some new way to kill himself. If you had ever been up in a balloon, Doctor, you'd realize the wonder of it. You'd see why I feel so strongly about... Hey, now there's a thought. Why don't you take an ascent with me? The next time... Oh! oh. Aha! What did I tell you about keeping the weight off that ankle? Uh, thank you for the invitation, my friend, but I am not foolish enough to risk my neck. I have a higher regard for my life, not like some doctors I could mention. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Oh, that fool, Lenormand. Have you heard of him? Lenormand? Dr. Lenormand? No, I do not believe... Well, I, I went to medical school with him. Even then, he was a dreamer. I thought he would outgrow it, but like yourself, he seems to want to risk his neck in some foolhardy adventure. He is a balloonist? Oh, no, no, no. He is inventing a method for saving lives in a fire. Oh, a worthy purpose, I grant you, but the way Lenormand is going about it all, oh, letting his practice wither while he experiments around with his idiotic idea. Mm. Just what is this idea? Well, as he explains it to me, it is a way of rescuing people from the upper stories of a burning building. Uh, he told me, as uh, same as you please, that he is devising a parasol of some kind uh, so people can leap to earth without injury. A parasol? Well, a, a special kind of parasol, uh, to hear him tell it. A piece of cloth uh, which would be shaped like a cone upside down. Huh? The air would fill out this cone and hold the cloth aloft. So the descent to the ground would be gradual. Uh, mind you now, I am only saying what Lenormand told me. The air would fill out the cloth and keep the person suspended beneath it so he wouldn't be dashed to the ground. Huh? Well, as I say, it is one thing to talk of such foolishness and another thing to try it. Try it? Uh... Does it work? Eh, well, that is what Lenormand intends to find out. He intends to jump from the top of the Montpelier Observatory Tower, putting his faith in a little piece of cloth. Why, he will be dashed to bits. A piece of cloth? It just might work. I, I must see Dr. Lenormand at once. Well, I hope you can talk him out of it, Andre. Talk him out of it? Why, it's the most amazing thing I've ever heard of. Talk him out of it. I will use this idea in ballooning. <laughs> Andre Garnerin saw in the idea a great aid for balloonists. He was there in the crowd when Dr. Lenormand took his amazing leap from the observatory roof with a piece of oil silk 14 feet in diameter well strapped to his person. He jumped. <laughs> ¶¶ 
and, surprisingly enough, landed safely. Nothing came of the idea as a fire-saving apparatus, but the remarkable leap gave more fuel to the idea in Garneran's mind, a device somewhat like it to save balloonists. Although Leonardo da Vinci and countless other men had the same idea, none of them had ever put it into practice. Garnera, giving his ankle time to mend, worked out a practical idea for a parachute. He then went to England to interest people in the idea. I am not interested, Mr. Garnera. I have no faith in the device whatsoever. But it has never been tried. Using one to land from a balloon, I mean. Oh, but it was, not two months ago, and right here in England. Funny you didn't hear of it, Mr. Garnera. Hmm. I was in France, probably the news... It was a chap named Arnold. He used to be a purser in the Royal Navy, as I recall. I'd like to know more about it. Well, uh, he had a basket attached to this parachute and had one of his assistants all stretched out in the basket. The idea was to go up one mile in the balloon, cut loose the parachute, and let the basket come back down. <laughs> a big crowd turned out to see it. <laughs> he had signs all over London. <laughs> see a gentleman sent down by parachute. <laughs> well, sir, they failed to get the balloon off the ground before the assistant got pitched out of the basket. The wires let go, and there the balloon went sailing up through the air, and the parachute and the basket was left below. Uh, Mr. Arnold went up with the balloon and got pitched out in the Thames River. I figure that's the way it was meant. People and parachutes should stay on the ground. No one seemed very interested in another parachute, not after Arnold's failure. But André Gonneran was determined and went ahead with his plans. Pardon, uh, you are Mr. Glosher de Detella? No, I am. Hey, what can I do for you, sir? A new suit, perhaps? Uh, no, no, no suit. Uh, I'm interested in silk. Ah, silk. Ha-ha, <laughs> the gentleman wants the shirt. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, you, you're wise to come to Glodget, sir. Yeah, you're, you're from France, I see, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you'll not find anywhere in your country such a tailor as myself. But... Now, if I can ascertain the size... I want will... 870 square feet of silk. Uh, yes, sir, 870... Well, 870 square feet? It is not for a shirt. I, I want you to sew a parachute. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, I never... Well, I mean, what is it? You have to do it exactly as I say. You will be well paid for your pains. Now, first, I will need 870 square feet of silk. Now, this is to be cut according to... André Garneran planned well. His parachute was designed much like modern ones. A centered disc of silk cloth bordered by 32 panels of silk strips. Instead of the cone shape, Garneran devised a cloth which resembled an inverted cup, a cup 23 feet in diameter. Garneran's measurements were comparable with modern parachutes, and by modern standards, he had a safe parachute. He had estimated the speed of his descent and the weight of himself and the basket that would be attached to the parachute. And one more thing, a most important addition. At the top of the canopy, I want a small hole for air to escape. Later, André changed his plans and closed that opening so he could attach the chute to the bottom of the balloon. But remember that small opening he had planned. It would have been better had Garnera kept to this original idea, but it's too late now. He's ready for the ascent from Volunteer Ground, London. The year is 1802. A large crowd has gathered to watch this breathtaking spectacle of a man purposely hurtling himself to earth with nothing between him and his reward but a thin wisp of silk. That's, that's what the blue's going to do. Going to let himself out of the balloon. Yeah, I wouldn't trust my life to a piece of cloth, mind you. Uh, Not while I have all my senses, I wouldn't. Uh, watch now. Any minute the balloon will go up. He'll start as soon as I get that fool parachute put on the bottom of it. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, that's the parachute hanging down from the bottom of the balloon. Now, you see it? You see it? We'd better say a prayer for the poor blighter. Uh, <laughs> As André Garneran sails toward the clouds, the crowd seems to grow quiet. From the balloon, André can see the vast meadows and open spaces ranging below him. 
He fingers the cord that connects the parachute with the balloon itself. He is up to 8,000 feet now. He takes a knife and cuts the cord that keeps the parachute aloft. Here he comes! The balloon rises sharply when freed from its load and Garnerat begins to plummet earthward. Then the parachute billows out and his fall is checked. Now the fall becomes gradual. And then a most unpleasant thing begins to happen. The basket in which Garnera is riding begins to swing back and forth, back and forth. At times, the basket swings so high as to be almost level with the top of the chute. Garnera swings to and fro like a human pendulum in the sky. Look at him swing! Oh, he'll be pitched right out of the basket! Mommy, he's swinging like a hammock! <laughs> Garnerin is almost unconscious from the severe oscillation of the parachute. The chute side slips rapidly toward the earth. But Garnerin has presence of mind enough to throw ballast out of his pockets. This checks his descent somewhat, but he is still falling to earth at the rate of 20 feet per second. If he lands when it swings like that, he'll be smashed to bits, eh, will? The swinging of the parachute is now lessened as Garnerin comes close to Earth after dropping 8,000 feet through space. He is ill and wobbly from the dizzy swinging, but he lands safely. Here he is! Here he is! Come on, man! Come on! Is he alive? Bless you, Garnerin! Bless you! Uh, uh, get, get me out of this cloth! Hey, come on, man! Come on! Get this cloth off! You're going to suffocate under it! Ah, there we are. You did it, Andre. Oh, Let me oh, shake your hands. Oh, please, please. I, I would like to rest a bit. No, oh, that swinging up there, I I don't feel very well. <laughs> if you don't mind, gentlemen, if I could just get some air and be left alone, I I feel rather dizzy. Uh, uh, come on, Marcos. Uh, let's uh, hoist him up on our shoulders and carry him back to town. Uh, that's it. Up you go, Andre. Uh, oh, no, 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 please. I... Uh, Oh, <laughs> and so Garnerin rode through space on a silken parachute, the first man to leap from a balloon and fall 8,000 feet through space and suffer no harm. The swinging of the parachute was caused mainly by the lack of an air vent to let the excess air escape through the top of the chute. Oddly enough, it was an idea which Garnerin had abandoned and which nearly cost him his life. But the air vent was soon restored and man, having conquered the skies, now conquered the journey back to Earth. Thanks to Andre Garnerin, who rode through space on a piece of silk in his adventure in research. And that's today's Adventures in Research. Produced in cooperation with the Westinghouse Research Laboratories. These programs are broadcast to Armed Forces personnel overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week for another transcribed story of science on adventures in research.